that I ask you to research. I ask you to research and you should come tonight with the answer. And I know somebody out there will have the answer. And the question was, um, how was the baptism of John the Baptist performed? Or was he baptized? We know that John the Baptist come and he was baptizing people. But um, do you know? Sorry, if he was baptized. And um, I'm open now for your answers. We have one month to look at it and to see if we could do any research on it. Uh, anybody want to try? There are some brilliant people around, man. You must be able to try if you can either be right or wrong <laughs> or a good effort. <laughs> um, to I can only say, Bishop. Pardon, sir? I said, I can only say he was he baptized unto repentance, um, but I could not say what name, if that is what you're acting, he baptized in. One thing I did know that he couldn't do, um, he couldn't be baptized in, in the name of Jesus Christ because he was supposed to baptize Jesus and he couldn't baptize Jesus in the name of Jesus because that would be for remission of sin. And he didn't have any sin. So you couldn't baptize him in the name of Jesus Christ because that would be for remission of sin. But I would see where some people who we have baptized were baptized over in the name of Jesus Christ because they were sinners. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. But what I'm really asking, did a baptism perform on John the Baptist? Oh, sorry, I didn't get <laughs> Yes, Yes, that's what I'm asking. But was a baptism performed? We know that he baptized people. But okay. was there was there a baptismal service held for John the Baptist and somebody baptized him or whatever form? Okay, I didn't I didn't understand that. Sorry for that. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, I know. Anybody else want to try? Repeat the question, please. We are trying to find out. Um, if John the Baptist was baptized, if somebody baptized John the Baptist, we know about John the Baptist that he baptized people, but was there a baptism ceremony performed on John the Baptist as a candidate, not as a baptizer, but as a candidate? Mm -hmm. That's what we're asking from last month. And, um, and we are trying to find out if in the scripture it is mentioned anywhere. One of the things that we have to try to understand, brethren, is that when we come to session like this, Bible study like this, we are not here to deal with excellence of speech. We are not here to demonstrate academics. What we more so interested in is the mystery of godliness. Mm -hmm. we, we, want to, we want the mystery of God to be revealed to us. All right? We don't really come because, you know, no, that's not it. The Lord told Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. All right? So what we really want my father, which is in heaven. We really want to get this thing from heaven. That's what we are here for. All right. So, anybody else want to try? Or you want me to store it and deal with it? Because we have our session tonight will be two part. I have to can't kind of finish it. So, I'll come back next next month with the other. The other I other. have a raise down there, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Can't sleep um, on this thing. Greetings. Could, his, be, could he be filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb be considered a baptism? I don't hear that. Could you give again? Could me, he be filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb be considered a baptism? <laughs> no, we are talking. No, it's, it's, it's all right. Put it this way. Yes, you are thinking. I see, I see a trail of thought. Um, Baptism with the Holy Ghost 
is really a baptism, right? But we are not talking about the Holy Ghost baptism now. We are talking about water baptism, all right? And, and the Holy Ghost baptism would not, could not compensate for water baptism. Because remember, um, if you even get the Holy Ghost before, can any man forbid water that he should not be baptized, all right? So you have to complete the birth. So that, that wouldn't, that, but, but actually it's the thought and I, I, I really didn't see that way how you were saying it. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I like to listen to this, you know, because um, I wasn't seeing it that way. But no. Anybody else want to try? Greetings, Bishop, can I try? Greetings, God bless sir. you, sir. Greetings. My understanding from a dispensation view of John the Baptist, uh -huh. John's ministry operated in two dispensation. He was the last of the prophets of under the law of Moses and the first in the New Testament prophet. Uh -huh. And under that dispensation, there was no need or requirement for baptism. So John was not baptized. Okay. I see what you're saying. Uh, because the law and the prophet was until John. And um, you are saying, oh, John is a sort of crossover between law and the kingdom of God, kingdom message, and all of that. Good thinking. <laughs> we have some brilliant thoughts, you know. Yes, good thinking, but that's not the answer I'm really looking for. <laughs> but I, I like that. I, I, I get two answers which really shake me up and let me say, okay, they are thinking people, brilliant people, right? Um, a last person want to try? Anybody else want to try? All right. Okay. Well, let's go to it now. The first, and I must tell you straight off the hook, that John the Baptist was baptized by God himself. And while I'm going through this, I expect you to stop me. But, but just follow me. Follow me. John the Baptist was baptized by God himself. But as, as Pastor Fear came very close to it, all right? Very close. I would give you some mark <laughs> You're in my class at school because I, I like what you think, the, 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 the thinking. But if you look now, um, for example, um, if you look, for example, at the children of Israel coming out of Egypt to go to um, the land of Canaan. Good. You will agree with me that they were, um, if you look at 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 4. Let's, let's read that and let's use that as our foundation to answer this question tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. And then we, we base our argument on that. One of the things that we have to learn, you see, is whenever, whenever we are doing things, we must try to find something in the Bible to base our, let's call it for now, our argument on. Right? We can just pick something out of the clear blue sky. We have to find something. Right? So somebody going to read from me 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 4, and I'll just answer this question from that point of view. Anybody? First Corinthians 10, verse 1 to 4. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant of that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed to the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. I did one. And did, so, and did all eat the same spiritual meat. Thank you. That's enough for me. No. When the children of Israel were leaving Egypt to Canaan, Egypt was a type of the world, if using typology now. Egypt was a type of the world. Canaan was a type of the church. Now to leave from the world to the church, you need a baptism. Even right now, if you come out of the world to the church, you need a baptism. But if you are leaving the church, 
to the world, you don't need any baptism. All right? So when the children of Israel, if you remember when Joseph went before them and they moved down, they were leaving, so to speak, from the church to the world, leaving from Canaan to Egypt. So they didn't need any baptism. But now that they are leaving from the world to the church, they need a baptism. So they were baptized. So when we see the, 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 um, the sea parted and so, they were baptized under Moses into the Red Sea. Good? So whenever you see the cross, like God crossed over water like that, it is a baptism. All right? Any question on that one? Okay. Now, next thing we need to know and we need to understand is when, I'll let me tell you straight up front and cut it short because I have to go to my lesson. Elijah later on came as John the Baptist. Elijah, prophet. Right? But now, if you look, for example, at 2 Kings 2, verse 5 to 10. 2 Kings 2, verse 5 to 10. Really quick for me, please, because we have to move to our lesson tonight. I'm just tearing up something. Second Kings 2, 5 to 10. Who's going to read that? Second Kings 2, verse 5 to 10. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest that thou, knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Carry, I pray thee, here. For the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men, sorry, of the sons of the prophet went, and stood to the view, uh, to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and hither. Just a minute. Now, when Elijah struck the water and it was divided, no man on earth can do that. Just like when Moses put the rod across the Red Sea, it was not Moses who divided the Red Sea, it was God. Good. So, when Elijah Stroke the water with his mantle, departed. When Elijah crossed over, go through the water and cross over the type of a baptism, just like the Red Sea. So Elijah was baptized in Jordan. Good? Right. Now, read the balance on your own. But let's move now to Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6. Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6. And you know, after they traveled together for a certain time, Elijah was taken up into heaven. Good. And I have a question on this to ask you later on. Good. And you're going to take that for until next month. But it, after the crossover and the Elijah walk with Elijah, you know, Elijah was taken up and so forth. Good. Now, um, Matthew, sorry, Malachi 4, verse 5 and 6. Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. And let's just go into it. Verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dead, dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Thank you. I am going to send Elijah the prophet. No, listen to this now. Before the Lord come, Elijah is going to come. So 
what are you going to do? Now, if you look, for example, at St. Luke 1, St. Luke 1, verse 5 to 17. Let me, let me just wrap it and explain to you what is happening. And I'm not going too far in it because I have a question I need to ask you at the end of it. Now, Elijah went up and God sent back Elijah in the spirit. So John the Baptist came to us in the spirit of Elijah. Right? Now, why is it that Elijah came back? And the question I'm going to ask you now for next month, why is it that Elijah came back and Enoch did not come back? Elijah came back the form of John the Baptist. But Enoch went up and didn't come back. So why was it that Elijah went up and come back as John the Baptist? But Enoch also went up, but Enoch never come back. Why? Is it discrimination? <laughs> no, no, so don't, don't say that at all. That's why I don't want that at all. I want Bible. I want to use Bible and tell me. Good. So you're going to read St. Luke chapter 1, verse 5 to 17. I may stop you along the way, but read. Bridging, do you need the Bible study tonight? Bridging, do you need the Bible study tonight? <laughs> I think you do. Yes, Bishop. Yes, Bishop. Yes, Bishop. I'm looking to see 53 persons, and if I'm asking to read something and you're not cooperating with me, then you know you're tired of You really don't want no more Bible study, right? No, Bishop. We need this. We need this, Bishop. We need it. <laughs> All right. When somebody reads in Luke 1, then the man, 5 to 17. Okay, there was in the days of Aaron, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the chorus of Adia, and his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they were both now well stricken in years. And it came to pass, but while he executed the priest of it before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priests of it, his lot was to burn incense. When he came, sorry, when he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of the incense, and were sorry, and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Um, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. Verse 16 and 17 now. Mm -hmm. And many other children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. And when they say Elias, it means Elijah. So just another translation, okay? Yeah. It's, so the spirit of Elijah. That is the same John the Baptist we are talking about. Good. God is able to bring him back in another form. But we want to know something. Now, so if we look now, for example, at Matthew 17, at Matthew 17, verse 9 to 13. St. Matthew 17. Verse 9 to 13. And then Saint Matthew 17. Yes, yeah, 9 to 13. 9 to 13, right. Okay. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man 
until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must, come, must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Verse 13. Yes. And then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Good. So he called him Elijah in one case, and in the other case, he called him John the Baptist. And he said, come already, because he come and prepare the way. And Herod killed him long time, and they didn't know. All right. Now, finally, let's look, for example, at Matthew 11, verse 7 to 15. Matthew 11, verse 7 to 15. What we are trying to establish to you is that in, in the first life, he, baptized, he was baptized in water. In his second life, he was filled with the Holy Ghost. So the baptism of John the Baptist was performed by the Lord himself. Good? That's what I'm trying to establish to you. Then Matthew 11, verse yes. 7, 7 verse to 15. 7. Yes, 7 to 15. Amen. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitude concerning John, What went he out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went he out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that bear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went he out for to see? A prophet, yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I sent my messengers before my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there art not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry. Yes. Just to tell you that John the Baptist was former Elijah. Elijah was baptized in water in Jordan. So when he came back as John the Baptist, he only needed to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And yes. that when he was baptized with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. So his yes. birth was completed. Now, my question to you now, for tonight, if you can answer it tonight, I'll give you two minutes. But why is it that John the Elijah came back as John the Baptist and Enoch did not come back? It's easy. It's in the Bible. This one now is in the Bible. You can, you can talk from that. I'll give you two minutes. Why is it? that John the Baptist, that Elijah rather, came back in the form of John the Baptist. And why was, why, why was, why, why did God bring back Elijah for that matter? Bring back. And why Enoch didn't come back? Praise the Lord Jesus, Brother Brown from Greenwich Road. Right, sir. Go ahead, brother. Bro. Not came. Yes, Enoch did not came back because Enoch went up as a form of the rapture, and John the Baptist and Elijah had to come back and died, because you can only go up to heaven by death or by the rapture. Uh, you are fifty. Uh, I'll give you between twenty-five and fifty percent. Anybody want to finish? But it's a good try. Anybody else want to 
finish it up? Um, when I, Bishop, I believe that um, Elijah came back as John the Baptist because John the Baptist was supposed to be the forerunner. He yeah. was supposed to be the one that should go, came, come before Christ to, to tell of him. So why he not didn't come back as a forerunner? You are saying that John the Baptist must come as a forerunner. Then, mm -hmm. you know, could come as a forerunner too. But it was not. It, it was. It was not um, there in, written in the Bible that Enoch was to be. Yes, we know all that. You know, we know that. But let me quiz you. So I am it, saying there so John might, have to, oh, had no, to be hold on. Sister Marcia, Sister yes. Marcia, hold on. Let me quiz you now. I am saying to you that. We are not describing what is there, you know. We don't want that here. What I'm asking you is to go into the mind of God and tell me why he chose Elijah to come back and he didn't choose Enoch to come back. So it's not a matter of what is written in the Bible. We know it is there. But why was it written that way? That's the difference, you know. That's what we call revelation. That's a total difference of God just telling you what you see on the, on the surface. So what we am sending you now is not so much to read until what you see in the Bible and describe what is there. I can do that. What I want to know, why you didn't use Enoch and you chose Elijah? That's my question. Yeah, I'm not sure on that one. <laughs> exactly <laughs> so. <laughs> Exactly so. I can't go see his mind at all. I'm not sure why he chose Enoch. Yeah, no, I know you're not sure. I know, I know you know. <laughs> but I'm trying to get to you here. My my job, right, is to train your mind and it's to train you to go further than what is there and still remain in the Bible. You understand mm. what I'm saying? My job okay. is is to let people think. Go, yes, and go beyond what is there. But don't come out of it. So if 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 you if a lot of things that are in the Bible, let me give you an example. Um, let's look at the woman with the alabaster box of ointment, right? Mm -hmm. um, if nobody told her that she should do that, mm -hmm. you know, put it on the Lord. But when it happened, it makes scripture, right? It makes yes. scripture. But it mm -hmm. wasn't written before that she should do it. But mm -hmm. she did it. And it makes scripture. As a matter of fact, the Lord said, anywhere this gospel is preached, men shall will be made of her. Right? Mm -hmm. So the, the idea then is to get us to think beyond just the surface, right? We have to go a little deeper. I don't right, know. So I don't think the, um, John was the chose was chosen. Pardon? I'm just thinking that John was was chosen to be the one to. Yes, I know. Go before, yes. But why? Um, but why? Why not you? <laughs> you know what I'm no, saying? Why? I'm worthy to be why, why, why? Why? All right. Why you didn't burn down there and you become that one? Why? You get the point I'm saying to you? Not my time. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're certainly right. I'm just yeah. picking up radio, you know? Yeah. Um, anyway, next week you'll come back with your next next month. Okay. Sir, but yes, Brother Brown. Here again. Just to tidy up what I had said earlier. Mm -hmm. Um that Enoch was translated as a form uh, of the rapture. Ah, no, you get it, Brother Brown. That's what I'm listening for. There's a difference between, there's a difference between taking up and translated, right? Um, translated is different from being taken up. For example, let's somebody look at Hebrews 11, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Read that quick for me, and then I'll just wrap up this. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews verse 11, five. verse 5. Yes. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had, had translated him. For before his translation, 
he had this testimony that he pleased God. Right. No, so the, the difference between Elijah and Enoch is that Elijah was taken up and you could see um, um, Elisha could see him while he was going up and he could catch his mantle, right? Now, Enoch was translated. That's a type, that is a type of the rapture now. Because when, when you are going up in the rapture, nobody will see you, right? You will be changed from mortal to immortality. So what happened to Enoch now? Enoch changed from mortal to immortality. So he was taken up, they can't come back. Elijah went up. And you can only go up two ways, either through the rapture or through death. But the Bible says Enoch should not see death. So he was translated, changed from mortal to immortality. And then now he can come back. But Elijah who went up here to come back and die in the form of John the Baptist to complete the process. Well done, Brother Brown. Well done. Which church are you from? Which church are you from? Come on, anything in the chat. Bishop, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Persons who die, yeah. they will not be raptured? Yes. Persons who die now, yes. when we say they can only go up by the rapture or by no. death? No, I'm saying we that are alive and remain, we will be translated. Good. The people that died already will also be translated. That's okay. it. the operative word is a translation. Okay. Okay. Right? Because we are, we are we are gonna go up together, you know. So no, it, but how it was presented is if persons who die will go up and persons um rapture, like it's two different things. Rapture and no, no, in the case of no. This is a particular case now. We are thinking about a particular case, not the general thing. It's a particular person. And we, we condense it down just to Elijah alone, nobody else. All right? So um, we are saying to you that in, in the case of Elijah, he was taken up, but he was not translated. Chariot of fire and horses just moved him up, but he was not translated. We are saying though that Enoch was translated. That now is a type of the rapture. All right. Yeah, good question. Very good. Very good observation. Um question for you, Bishop. God bless you again, sir. Yes, sir. Is there is there a difference between see death and taste death? Pardon? Is there a difference between see death and taste death? Yes. Yes. Because you see, that, that by itself, you know, is not really for, for the Christian. That is not for the Christian. But we, but we our vocabulary is in such a way is, is so skewed towards saying that. But the, the Christian don't really die. You know, the Christian, the Christian don't really die as such as the Christian really sleep. Okay, now when a person um, see that, that he should not see that, all right, or the person should not taste of it. If you look at that in the real form, that in the real form is not for the Christian. That is really for the answer. So, when when we look at for example lazarus right bible says lazarus died but in truth and in fact if you follow through you will see that the angel take lazarus into the arm of abraham right while the rich man really was tasting death good so the rich, if you look at Lazarus and the rich man, you see two different, they, they go to nearly the same process, look like the same process, but it's not the same. All right, because we move to, when we, when, when we say we die then, we are moving from one phase to another, right? But the man who really not moving from any phase, they're going to stay in death and they're going to taste of death. 
until the real debt comes, because that even still is not debt yet, right? The second debt is real debt, when well, the sentence, because the first, the first part of it is we are put into, let us call it a jail. L is like a jail, all right? And from there, you get the sentence, not the white throne judgment, to the lake of fire, all right? Um, yes, no. um, praise, praise the Lord, sir. Sister Jem from Summerton. Yes, as you, as you were differentiating with Enoch and Elijah, yes. how would you put the Lord taken when the Lord taken up? What you would call that part, the Lord Jesus, when he was taken up? No, man. He does not. He wasn't, he wasn't translated or not, you know. He just got. Just, he was from there before and just go back up. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you see, the thing that affect us, right? It don't affect him at all, you know. Nothing at all affect him. He just, he, for example, he laid down his life. Nobody yes. take his life. He laid down his life. He take up back his life. He came down from heaven and he ascended to heaven. You know, okay. he just ascended. The ascension you go. It's not a it's not a rapture, type of rapture, no, not like that. No, 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 no. Okay. Not like that. You just go. Yes. Come from here and go back here. Right? Yes. Yes, Bishop. I was I was about to ask a question. Um that I, I would like you to do a short summary. I'm going back to Elijah and Enoch. Yeah. I wanted to do a, 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 a summary of the answer. Of the? of the answer that you gave. <clears throat> why is no, it I'm that? Not, um, I'm not hearing the two well, you know, I, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying I want a short summary just, just for clarification because okay. I'm writing it down. Okay. Why I, I, is it that Elisha? Okay, a summary. Yes, uh, let, me give you a summary. let me give you a summary now. The summary is we have, it started out where I asked the question. Or was John the Baptist baptized? That's how it started out. Now, if you're going to look down, mm -hmm. pardon? That was a question from the last, uh, the last Bible study. No, sorry, what did you ask me? Um, going back, you said, why did Elisha came back and Enoch did not return? Oh, that's so, what you want to hear? Yes, I want to give you a summary of that. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay. We are saying it's two different operations, two different operations with the two persons. What the operative word that you need to get, right, is Hebrew 11.5, which is translation, translation. So when a person is translated like what happened to Enoch, he, he, he finished the process. So, he was translated from mortal to immortality. Good? No, so he can't come back. Just like when the saints are, the rapture come, we will be changed from mortal to immortality. So we can't come back and turn normal human being like what we are now. Good? Now, in Elijah's case, he was not translated. He was taken up just like how Elijah saw him going up into heaven. Mm -hmm. So he, now I am saying to you that we enter heaven by the rapture. Whether you're alive or you're dead, it's still the rapture. Or um, we, we enter by the rapture and by if you're living and dead, right? That's two ways. So when, when, if you are alive and remain, and you sleep before, it's the same process. Good? Right. Now, because none of these, one of them affect Elijah, he went up, but he was not changed. He went up in flesh and blood, just like how Elijah saw him going up and threw back his mantle, and Elijah caught the mantle. So he had to come back here to finish his job. He had done some unfinished job. So when he came back now, Herod, um, he came back as John the Baptist, right? And then Herod now 
because he's Herod told the king so the king didn't like it and they beheaded John the Baptist and that before the Lord came now it, it complete the process so John the Baptist now fulfill all the requirements to be with the Lord permanently all right I don't know if I tell me which area you don't understand um <laughs> Why did he come back as John? Why did he came? Why did he come? Come rather, come is the word. Why did he come in the form of John the Baptist? All right. Because the Lord wanted somebody to prepare the way before him, before he come. And if you look back in Malachi, I told you the Lord says sin is making the before him. Right? He wants somebody to come and prepare the way because John the Baptist come between one dispensation of law and grace. Good. So the people that were coming, and the Bible said from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence because the kingdom message started to preach. Before that, no kingdom message preached. And before that, no baptism was done in terms of man baptizing man. Would John the Baptist make a revolution in all these things? Good. And if you notice, when the Lord came, the Lord was preaching the same message like John the Baptist repented for the kingdom of heaven. Is at hand. So God wants somebody to do the job. And this will, you will see more of this now next next month when we go into it, we'll show you all the things interconnected. All right. And and, and Elijah you. was a man who God see uh that he want to do this job. That's why he chose Elijah. Uh, okay. He was a forerunner before the Lord to prepare the way before the Lord. All right. What did the Lord choose you to do, Sister Marcia? In terms of? No, I don't know. I'm asking what? you. Oh, I'm what a teacher. Did the Lord I'm a school you teacher. To do? I'm a school teacher. Pardon? I'm a school teacher, primary school teacher. Yes, man, yes. Yes. You know, you know something? There was a man <laughs> who came to the Lord, you know, and he said to the Lord, you know, you know, Lord, I am a man of authority, you know. When I hold there, I tell this one go and that one come. But when I come to you, I am not worthy mm -hmm. that you should come under my roof. So, of course, we are a big edu educator, yes, but that's not what we're talking about now. We're talking about in the kingdom, what were you called to do? <laughs> get it? So we don't yes, care I get too. it. There are some people who come in the kingdom, you know. Okay. I carry over something from the world and come over here. And That's inside right. The, inside That's the kingdom true. is a born again. Inside the kingdom is born again. Mm -hmm. So if you carry over things from out the world, come over here, you're not born again. You know? Not at all. And the man being Christ is what? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's go on. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Nice, nice little chit chat tonight. All right. Good. So next question, the question for next month now, if God prepare a garden and he put Adam in the garden, um, there should be no uh, rain. It did not rain. A mist just go up and water the earth and everything was perfect. Why did God tell Adam to dress the garden? Don't answer that tonight. Answer that next month. Why? If God fence it around, God set it up so good, Adam should just relax. Why did God tell Adam to just work in it? Why? God enough things we are talking about. All right? So come with that next. Don't answer that now. Come with that next month. Okay? <laughs> All right, good. All right. Tonight. We have a two-part series, and we we don't we wouldn't be able to finish it tonight, so I divide it in two. We are looking at tonight, um, the secrets of heaven are revealed to the church. The secrets of heaven are revealed to the church. Now, I must warn you from now that when we talk about the church, we are not talking about a congregation. Good. We are not speaking about because this is what is causing the problem. 
people talk about the church and mix up the church with the congregation. Now, I dare say to you that the church is in the congregation, but the congregation is not in the church. Let me repeat. The church is in the congregation, but the congregation is not in the church. So look at it. Let us say the Lord was here and 5,000 people following him. That's a congregation. Within the congregation, you'll find 12 disciples. So you will find the disciples within the congregation. But when the Lord ready to speak with the disciples, the congregation is not there. Good? Fine. So when we say the secrets, God reveal his secrets to the church, we are not talking about the congregation because there are some people who will be there for what is it, time immemorial and don't understand one thing that is happening in the church because they are the congregation. And we'll see what we are talking about. Next week, we go deeper into the sandwich, but we're just scanning it tonight and show you just the authority of God and so tonight. All right, but next week, I really wanted to come to see. Because one of the things is that you can be at a place. Let me use, let me use Peter. You can, Peter can be at a place and a cock start to crow. And as far as other people are saying, the cock is making noise. The rooster is making some noise. But to Peter, it means far more than that. If you, if you were there looking at Peter, you would say, what a stupid man. I mean, a rooster crowing and just crying. To the church, things that are happening around, it don't mean much to some people. But to the church, we find the word of God in almost everything because you, Peter, find the word of God in the crowing of the, the cock. While other people not even realize it. it's just a normal thing. Right? So it's just like when um it just like when the Lord asked the his disciples, who do men say that I the son of man are? And men say all different types of things. Good, but and you know what it means by that. Some say a Jeremiah, whatever, one of the prophets. We don't know. No. Consider yourself in one of those assemblies. You'll be learning that Jesus is one of the prophets from Jeremiah and so forth. Hmm? That's what you'll be learning. But when you are in the church now, who do you say this that I, the son of man, am? Then you will say, Thou art the Christ the son of the living God. And the Lord will say to you, you know, you didn't go to school to learn this, you know. You're not academics. This. Some people float in academics, and it's not academics. And that's why I want you to listen to the lesson next week, because you will realize that it's totally out of our control. It's a revelation from God. Hmm? Lord said, flesh and blood has not revealed this until you flesh and blood cannot reveal. Right? Flesh and blood can ask questions, but flesh and blood can reveal. It re revelation has to come from God. Good? So that's what we are saying. So we are not talking about the congregation now. And please don't mix up the church, the body of Christ, eh? the bride of Christ. Don't mix it up with every and anybody who set up a two bamboo stick and say they are a church. Right? No, the apostles did not do that. Right? So when you look at the Sanhedrin, for example, they, they, they will persecute the church, the real church, right? The, the real church will go up to the temple and say, um, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have given I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and what the power of God and the power of the Holy Ghost demonstrate to show the difference between the church. The son of Adrian will say to them, preach in any other name, but don't preach in this name. All right? So the church has a message. The church has the gospel. The church has the doctrine. And that is what God revealed to that body of people, his bride, 
that we call the church. All right? I have to tell you that God cannot learn anything. Right? God can learn. God is the embodiment of all the knowledge, all the wisdom, all the understanding that come from God. Now we learn. We have to open our understanding so that we understand the scripture because what he is the word. Okay? So I'm trying to get you to think that not any and any little society that call himself church, God is going to reveal himself to them. No. He's going to reveal it to the church, which is the body of Christ. And when he's coming back, he's coming back for the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. God is omniscient. God is omnipresent. God is omnipotent. And when you start to when you start to learn about God, then what will happen to your mind just blow. Sometimes when I'm thinking about God and I'm reading a scripture to close the Bible, because my mind just fade out. I can't go any further. Just just to think about God. Yeah, just to think about God, who He is. It, 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 Cause my mind just to fade out. I can't think. I can't reason it. I can't. I can't reason it. I have to stop. And sometimes one verse of scripture can take me a very long time. And sometimes I have to leave it and walk and think about it. And on my way going, the Lord just hope my hand is and says, "See there, <laughs> it's easy, you know." But if I'm going to use education, I can't get it. You'll never get it. So if the Lord said, for example, to a ruler, a great ruler of the Jews, you you must be born again. Huh? Born again, simple. It's a simple, you no. Know, born again, then I must. But but tell me, if you didn't know, no. If you were if you were Nicodemus that time. And the Lord said, you must be born again. What would you be thinking? Be honest. I would be thinking to go back into my mother's womb and come out. That's what I would think. <laughs> so that, honestly, that's what I would be thinking. Go back into my mother's womb and come out. Because there's no other way you could understand you must be born again, what it means. And the Lord is saying, are you a ruler of the Jews? I don't know this man. It's a simple thing, you know. Right? Anyway, let's run. Remember, it's two parts, so we're gonna do try the one part tonight, but the second part will be critical. All right, let us browse my one tonight. Look, let's look for example at Psalm twenty-four, verse one and two. Psalm twenty-four, one and two. Remember, we're talking about the secret of heaven are revealed to the church, all right? And in heaven, there are secrets. If you go into heaven. And I'm talking about heaven now as a book in heaven. And I'm talking about the book as the mind of God. And if you go into the mind of God, you will realize that when we try to do something without God, we are really wasting time. All right? Because everything is mapped out in heaven. So it, it happened in heaven already before it happened in earth. Because the will of God must be done in earth as it is in heaven. Right? Think about a will. We're not going to probate a will. It has to be done according to what the testator say. Right? So when the will of God is written in heaven about earth, it must be done as how it is in them. So some people on earth trying to fight and quarrel and tear down and do all it don't make sense because if it is not how God said in heaven, don't hear, it's not fair. Don't make sense. Give me a little tell some people say, look here, leave them alone, don't trouble them. Because some people come before and they were doing something that didn't work out. It goes for God, it didn't work out. If this thing is of God, you can't fight it. You can fight against God. <laughs> so leave the apostles alone. <laughs> Psalm 24, 1 and 2. Who want to read that for me? 
Psalm 24, verse 1 and 2. Yes. The heart is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Thank you. Now, the earth is the Lord's. And as the last time, remember, I asked you about that pastor today. Very important. All right. So the earth belonged to the Lord. Somebody find Isaiah 66, verse 1. In the meanwhile, for me, the earth belonged to the Lord. So the earth, remember now, the earth belonged to him. The fullness thereof. Everything that is here. The world and they are in the systems and they that dwell the people that dwell therein belong to God. It is, it don't make sense, brethren, for us to own it because it's not ours. As a matter of fact, we can, we can own it, but for how long? For how long? Um, a lot of people come and own acreage, hundreds of acres of land. And at the end of the day, they only get six foot six, right? Because it, it's belonged to God and it was here before we came. Now, one of the things that affect human beings sometimes is that they don't realize if I buy a piece of land, okay, as far as I'm concerned, my piece of land, but right, so yes, but a lot of people own that land before me. <laughs> Hundred and thousand of years before people owned that piece of land before me. And I, they, they were just there with it for a while until they leave it and gone. And I am going to leave it and gone too. All right. So always remember the earth belongs to the Lord, the fullness, everything is here. It don't make sense to fight and quarrel. And no, no. Everything belongs to God. And after a short time, we believe in it. All right. Isaiah 66 1. Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. The heaven is my throne. The heaven, no, this again, remember from last time we were talking, I said to you, when you open the Bible and you see, thus said the Lord, stand to attention, so to speak, right? Give the earnest heed to this, because it's a direct word coming from God's mouth. Thus said the Lord, what he said now. The heaven is my throne, uh -huh. and the earth is my footstool. Yeah. Where is the house that you build unto me? Yeah. And where is the place of my rest? We, you see, um, we learned the song that he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. Now, if the heaven is his throne, and the earth is his footstool, it means that he is both at heaven and earth at the same time. If I'm sitting at a chair, on a chair, and my foot is on the ground, it means that I'm both on the chair and the ground at the same time. So if the heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool, it means that he's both heaven and earth at the same time. Now this answer the question. The question then, let's let's get it a little literal then. Somebody is asking the question. When a voice from heaven says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. If the heaven is his throne, he's sitting there, and the earth is his footstool, so where will his mouth be? Where will his head be? In the heavens. <laughs> So who was talking up here? <laughs> Everything is true. The earth is his footstool. I, I can take up my telephone and I can call somebody in England and I'm in Jamaica and my voice is in England. Right? And I'm a man. Simple man. And if you put if you put the phone on a loudspeaker, I could be in England preaching and I'm in Jamaica. And I'm a man. So why? The ever is thrown and the earth is footstool. Why you can't hear his voice in earth? <laughs> anyway, that's that's a commercial, all right? Good. Um, yes. Now, if we go to Psalm 83, verse 16 and 18. Psalm 83, verse 16 and 18. 
We want to show people that sometimes when people are empowered, at least we thought so, because power can't come to us unless it comes from God. Good. What happens sometimes is that we take it to the ridiculous. We sometimes forget that there is a word called humility. And once you see humility is moving away from us and pride is coming into us, we are, we are really quoting destruction. Hmm? Because pride go before destruction and art the spirit before a fall. So we have to understand that we are subjects. The heaven is the metropole. The earth is a colony. We are subject to the metropole. Good. And therefore, the laws of the metropole govern the earth. Mm -hmm. So if we want to do something, the next thing we should do is check the constitution of the metropole that is sent, that's sent to her, which is the Bible. And the Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and then he shall direct our path. We can't let vexation, angry, and what they call it again, um, all different types of bitterness and wrath allow us to do things which is which is unconstitutional when you check the Bible, why did you do that? So the Bible said, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding because our own understanding will push us off, all right? Our own understanding will destroy us. And that is why when the Lord came here, the disciples had understanding, you know, they had it, but he had to open yeah, their understanding so that they understand scripture. Yeah. Because if you don't open it, the, the, the scripture is not the daily gleaner. Mm -hmm. it, you, you know, it, it's not what you see on the paper. Right. It's the word of God. It's God Himself you're looking at. Right? So it is deeper than all we just can across. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have to be very careful. Psalm 83, 16 to 18. Psalm 83, verse 16. Yes. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Your, your, your name, Jehovah, the mo you're the most high, and you are over all the earth. We should know that. And therefore, uh, let me put it under way to you. Let's assume that visitors come from abroad and they come from a different culture but they're staying with you good now since they're staying into your house what they 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 are required then to adjust their behavior pattern until they go back abroad all right let me let me get an extreme case you are a christian but you have some relatives, they are not Christian and they come to Jamaica. Hmm? And when they come, you could, you just can't take your breath because the cigarette is burning non-stop in your house. No, no, no. It means that you, you tolerate it for a while, but after a while, you just can't go into your way and tell them, say, look here, man, I just can't take the cigarette in the house because we don't use it. Eh? A lot of expletives, a lot of you know, different type of music that you really don't want in your house. And they come there doing that. Right? Then they're not going to feel good. Good? Now, if we know that the earth belongs to the Lord, 
the fullest thereof, the world, and he rule here, and he set his rules down here. It is for us to find out, since we are just coming here, he, he set it up, you know, his, his place. And we are just here for a little while. We are just pilgrims passing through. It is for, it is our responsibility to find out what the Lord wants in his place and adjust our behavior to suit him. Because if we don't do that thing, we're expel us and believe it or not. It, you know. So what we'll have to do is to do our research. Do our research. And let me tell you how we start to do our research now. Let's look at um, Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm 25, verse 14. And then we'll be, we start to our research now. Psalm Next 25, week. verse 14. Yes. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Good. Now, God has some secrets. Now, follow me now. Secret is for your friend. Secret is for, I tell you something, not even members of the family, some of them cannot tell you a secret. The secret is for people who are a confider, people who are certain will keep your secret. Now, there are some people who reverence the Lord and the Lord know them from the heart out, not from the out in, from in out, the heart. And next week, next, sorry, next month, please, I want you to come because we're show you something in all God's thing. Now, so the secret of the Lord now is with them that fear him. And God will show them things. So if 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 he if the people don't fear God, reverence God, be near to God, being a friend of God like Abraham and those people, they'll be in the church for years and still don't know God's secret. They'll be following. Have, have you have been so long a time with you and you don't know me? <laughs> you understand? Some people will be there for years and they don't know. Because God not giving them the secret. There is a secret, remember I tell you, right? So we have to understand the secret of the Lord. And what we are trying to get now is God's secret. And God's secret is not necessarily there for everybody. God's secret is for a few people. Now there are a lot of people who are going to work and do a lot of things. And the last day they hear the Lord say, I didn't know you. I will put you to work here. I didn't get no work to do. You want it? So, I mean, you know, I have, a, I have a tree, you know, I have a tree. And um, I saw, I hear something knock on a zinc outside. The tree is by the roadside. And when I look, I see a man with a stick picking his roots. And then I drove around to him. I said to him, tell me something. Did you plant that tree? <laughs> he said, no. I said, all right. But I, it's, a, it's a black man with tree. So I had some in the car. So I said, come in and give you some, man. And I give him some, you know, and he was feeling so happy. But the point is, when I asked him if he plant that tree, you know, he was there reaping. He plant not. <laughs> the secret of the Lord is if people that fear him. Good. And God will show you things. Not people who come and decide and have pick and have eat and have help themselves. Where you know they didn't plant nothing but them are right? No, not even the secret of the Lord. But if you look, for example, at um, Daniel two, if you look at that Daniel two, I'm gonna have a good reading now, seven to thirty, quick reading. I won't stop you much, but I want to show you something that there's still more than just secret. All right, God will. Put something in you more than just the normal secret. Hmm? So there are people who will know more than us. There are people who God will anoint with an anointing that is different from us because it depends on our relationship with Him. 
Um, nobody is going to write your will and put somebody there who you know not trustworthy. They won't do that. It don't make sense. All right. So there are people and there are people. There are children and there are children. There are adults and there are adults. And there are some people you will tell so far. And there are some people who can't go any further than that. All right. So let's go to Daniel 2, verse 7 to verse 30. Quickly run down for me. Quickly. Daniel 2 from verse 7. Yeah, from verse 7 to 30. Where is that answered right? again and said, let the king tell this, let the king tell his servant the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. Just a the minute. King just, just, just a minute. Just a minute. I just want to run it down, and then I come back to you, right? You know that the king of this dream, king of Nebuchadnezzar have this dream, and then he want the wise men to tell him the dream and tell him the interpretation. No. That not possible at all upon earth here. Good. The, the wise man is saying to him, tell us the, the, the dream, King, and we'll tell you the interpretation. Because that which you ask is the, the God that we have here can't tell us that. No king has ever asked that of anybody. All right. So we reach a point that they want to kill all the wise men, which would cause Daniel to be killed also. So Daniel seeks audience and then um we continue from that now let's go okay verse seven again they they answered again and said let the king tell his servants the dream and we will show the interpretation of yes. it the king answered and said i know of certain that he would gain the time because he sees the thing is gone from me but if he will not make known unto me the dream there is but one decree for you, for ye have prepared lying, corrupt words to speak <coughs> before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. Yeah. The, the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. And it is a real thing that the king requires, and there is none other that can show it before the king, except the gods who dwell in is not with flesh. Hold on, just a minute, just a minute, please. No, it's not me or you saying that, you know. Yeah. Is the magicians, is the astrologers, the Chaldeans, they are saying the God that we worship will never be able to tell you that. And no king would ask that. It must be a God that is a spirit. A God that is in flesh will not be able to do that. And that is why we tell people all the while, don't carry, don't be carried away with, with the magicians and the soothsayers and those people. Some people on the streets, if people want to come and do palm reading, say reading and tell your future foolishness. Nothing go like that. All right? They, they just taking away your money. Some people tied to astrology, right? Every day they have to run, go listen, uh, um, they call it horoscope and all these things. These things are and not really from God, you know. It's Babylonian things, you know. A lot of things that you see we crazy over because we were colonized over a period of time and then we don't understand the real thing. And that's why the Bible says in June, we should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. If we don't know that, then we are carried away with every winds of doctrine. All right? So only God that is a spirit can do this, really. Verse 12, for this cause, the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Yes. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Aria, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth, to slay the wise men of Babylon. 
Yes. He answered, said to Haria, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Aria, then, then Aria made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Ananiah, Michel, and Azariah, his companions. You notice he didn't make it known to Shada, Michigan, and Bendigo. And, yeah. and it wasn't that um, Belshazzar make it known to these people, to, to, to Shadrach, Michigan, and Bendigo. No. When you go into captivity, the first thing they do is to change your name. By changing your name, it changes your identity. By changing your identity, it makes you conform easier with what happened in Babylon. And therefore, the church has to be very careful or you take on the, the, the titles and the name of the people. It's like, uh, this is a warning now, to mothers, to young mothers that are coming on. When you have children, be careful of the name that you give them. Because you can give a child a name and that name is associated with a particular demon. When every time you call the name of the child, you call the demon. And the child can be behaving certain ways and you wonder what happened to your child. It starts from the name, the name characterize the person. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right. Would you give your child name Judas? Would you give your child name Jezebel? Would you give your child name Lucifer? And if you wouldn't do that, your name characterize you. You have to be very careful. All right? So that's why Daniel don't take on the name. Because if you take on the name, it's associated with a type of behavior pattern. If you notice, if you go back with him, he'll read. Verse 18. That they would desire mercies of the of the God of heaven concerning this secret, mm -hmm. that Daniel and his fellows would not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Then was the secret secret revealed unto Daniel in then the was it, Then was the what? The secret the revealed what? unto Daniel. The secret. The seek he, he learned his story some book. Then he was a secret say, some book and study some dream book. He study some dream book and when he no, dreamed about this. The secret, eh? Yeah. Was what? Could you read again from the please? Revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Yeah. Then Daniel blessed God of heaven. Blessed the God of heaven. Mm -hmm. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. Mm -hmm. And he changed the times and the season. He removed kings and set it up kings. He do what? He, he Did you say he kings. removed kings? Yes, he removed kings. God is able to remove and kings. set it up kings. Oh Lord, yeah. He gave it wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. Mm -hmm. He revealed the deep and secret things. Stop right he there. What? Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. He revealed it, not just secrets. Not just secrets. The deep, the deep, deep and secret things. He revealed it. It's a revelation. He revealed the deep and secret thing now can you imagine a secret is already difficult to understand you know to, to, to get you know a secret but the secret pass that exponentially is deep and secret thing now tell me something a man dream a dream and he can't remember what he dreamed it shouldn't be troubling him then if you can't remember anything you forget it shouldn't trouble you it shouldn't trouble you Right? But God has a way where it take it out of you, you, the, the, uh, your faculties not there. But it is in your system. It is down in your soul, bothering you. 
all right? And in this case now, Daniel saw the God of heaven. And this is what they are saying, that the secret, God revealed the secret to the church. Daniel and his brethren was a type of the church in Babylon. Babylon now is a type of the world. Good, read. Verse 22, he revealed the deep and secret things. Mm -hmm. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. Mm -hmm. I thank thee and praise thee, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might mm -hmm. and has made known unto me know what we desire of thee. Mm -hmm. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore, Daniel went in unto Aria, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Aria brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captivities of Judah just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. I have not found one man in Babylon. Yeah. The entire Babylon. And with the multitude of wise men that you say you have, I'm mean, not find one. But, so if you look at it now, you could look at Babylon as the congregation. You could look at Daniel and the three Hebrew men as the church. So what are you gonna find? You're gonna find, we are talking typology you now, please follow this. So what you're gonna find happening is that Daniel is in Babylon, but Babylon is not in Daniel. Daniel is reaching to the most high God. Good. Read. I have found a man of the captiv captives of Judah mm -hmm. that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret with the, which the king asked demanded, cannot the wise men, the astrologer, the magicians, the soothsayers show it unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and make it known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? Right. And he that revealeth secrets, make it known to thee what shall come to pass. Verse Thank 30. You. Thank you. Thank you. Please read the balance when you go home. It's very interesting. Very interesting. But the, the astrologers and the wise men, yeah? What you put your confidence in, they are not able, but there is a God in heaven that revealed deep and secret thing. Now, if you look, for example, um, at what Amos 3, verse 6 and 7 said, Amos 3, verse 6 and 7, very interesting. Because the dream went away from the king no human being on earth would be able to tell the king the dream and tell it interpreted because some people buy some books they call dream books and when you go to it it tell you symbols it give you symbols of um animal when the dream say that what it's all about i mean i said no in this case they couldn't have a dream book because the thing went from the king's mind. Now, God is able to go into the king's mind, take up the dream and give it to his servant. The secrets of heaven are revealed to the church. 
I'm saying to you, Bergen, when I, here to, I'm here tonight, one of the things that we should try to do is not just to be routine, you know, and spend time doing things that are not necessary. Waste our time doing all different type of things, which is not necessary. It's like, oh, um, Martha will be there quarreling over this and quarreling over that while Mary taking in the work. Yeah. You see, there are some people who dedicate themselves into the word of God, where other people are quarreling that they should be doing this and should be doing that. You can't admit that I'm here because what happens every moment you spend quarreling and fighting and all that is valuable time that you could get into the deep secret of God. And Satan, I'll make you know that, you know, you make you see it every day. I call it Mary, say Mary should be out there for food. And all so that you realize that the Lord said Mary has chosen the better part. The better part. All right, so we need to, and don't let Satan fool you. Else you spend your whole, you know, you, you know something? We can use the same pen to write tracks. We can write some nice tracks, you know, and send out. And we can use the same computer and we go on the system. Some people are doing evangelism now on computer, right? While some people are using it to do all different types of things. Yeah? We can use everything we have. We can use it in the presence of the Lord and God can be glorified. In other words, we should try to make sure everything that we do, God is glorified. Now, Daniel, don't just hurry, come up, you know. No, just mm. come up. Daniel was praying. Daniel was a praying man. Three times per day, Daniel prayed. He went time good and not now after him. Daniel is praying while some people are waste time and watch him. You understand what I'm saying? We have to be careful about that. All right. So we say we go to Amos 3, verse 6 and 7. Amen. Amos 3. Amos 3. Amos 3. Blown in the city. Mm. And the people must be afraid. Shall there be evil in a city? And the Lord hath not done it. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he will reveal it his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Thank you. God will reveal his secret. God will do nothing, but he will reveal his secret to his servants, the prophets. Now, God knows who to trust with his secrets. You don't just bounce out people out the way and fight the way through. And it's not so. And I, I, as I said to you, come next month, we need to go into that part of it. We've got side this week, the human side this week, next month. We are saying to you that God is the one that revealed it to you. Now, if there is, let me give you an example. If there is an Ethiopian eunuch down in the desert, God will find a Philip. And God will, the Holy Ghost will transport Philip down into Giza. And God will have him to baptize that Ethiopian eunuch. So God revealed to him what to say. All right? And when God finished, the Holy Ghost take him up from there again, like a helicopter uh, moving to somewhere else. We should try, brethren, when I look at the church, when I look at the church, I, my name is John, so please, <laughs> please forgive me, because when John, John weep, and my mother, I love this name, my mother could give me a better name, I don't know, you know, and, and you know, I, I gotta tell you I get this name to you know, I got this name because my father name was Jonathan, and in fact, my wife's father name was Jonathan also, but um, so when she went to register me those days at the post office, a man named Sam Brown, Sam Brown, he was the one who sat there and when the telegram, sorry for the young children, but there was something called telegram. When telegram come, that man would take it to the people. Would, and Sam Brown said, no, don't give him name Jonathan because it's gonna cause problem with his letter and his father's letter. All right, so give him name John Llewellyn. I remember that gave me the name John. Sam Brown, I tell you, I'm glad Sam Brown. But I think it's right like to of God because I, I, I look at the characteristic, or I'm characterized. I'm the girl who I am. And, and, you know, 
I tell the king, say, King, listen, it's not right to take the brother's wife. I, I, <laughs> and, and, and I don't think that laugh, you know, mean anything to me. I just think that if, if you are put down, you know, I'm just that. It characterized me. And that's why I say to you, when you give the children name, be careful what you give them, because they are characterized them. Right? Good. So, um, Yes, so the Lord will do nothing but he reveal his secret, reveal it, give you a revelation. So you can hear some people talking something and say, Woo, woo, why will come by that day? It's not him, it's not him. It's God or she. Let God, God reveal it. Now, let me show you something now. First Timothy 3, verse 14 to 16. First Timothy 3. Verse 14 to 16. 14. Verse Timothy 3. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how to allow us to behave thy set in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. There is a behavior that is necessary for the church. There's a cultural practice. There's something that heaven designed for the church. Uh, because some people don't even understand church. When I say church, some people don't even understand uh, the temple, even normally like a temple that they go in and worship. Some people don't know that when they go in the temple um, and the Bible, they're gonna read the Bible, you must stand up. Some people don't know that when somebody praying, you know, to step over them. That they're praying, you can't wait until they finish praying. They're talking to God, you know. You're not supposed to do that. Some people don't know that when they come and the Bible is being read, you know, to walk into the service. Stand up outside if you are late until the Bible finish read, then you go in. Right? So there, there is some behavior, church behavior, that you must know that when you are in church, you go there, you enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And you must know that um, when you are in church, it's not a social club, right? You never know tell nobody on the rice burn up last night and boy, the sun, you're laughing and all. No, 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 no. We, when you finish the votes, I do that. When the Lord was in church, he. Um, he stood up to read the book of the prophet Isaiah and then he gave it to the um, minister and he sat down, right? Right. I have, a, I have one more question to give you on that when I finish. Take the video, but I don't read it. Um, so now, First Timothy 3, verse 40 to 16, tell us that we should know how to behave in the, in the house of God. Read. Verse 16, mm -hmm. and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Yes, great is the mystery of godliness. Now, when you're talking about mystery, mystery has to be revealed. You can learn mystery. Mystery has to be revealed. But it is not just mystery. Mystery alone is difficult. But the Bible says, great is a mystery of godliness. Anything that concerns God is a mystery, right? And that has to be revealed. So great is a mystery of godliness. For well, God was manifesting in flesh. If there's some people that, it don't mean anything. Now, Colossians 1, verse 23 to 27. We're coming down, so bear with me a little. Colossians 1. Verse 23 to 27. Can somebody read that for me, please. And anytime you come to. Colossians 1. Yes. 23 to 27. Okay. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and 
fill up that which is behind of the affliction of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations by now is made manifest to his saints. Verse 27, yeah. to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yes, because this mystery, Megan, has been coming from generation. And some people, I tell you what, some of the, let me use an example like um, Joel. Joel prophesied about the Holy Ghost. Shall come to pass the last day that shall pour the spirit of an author. But Joel didn't experience it. To Joel, even though he prophesied it, it was still a mystery to him. Good. So a lot of things are happening today that God revealed to us that sometimes we not even realize what is happening. Right? It comes like ABC to us, to them great men in the former days would like to know, would try to know what is happening now, and it was not revealed to them. The revelation was not for their time. It was not for their um, dispensation. Now, if you, let me stop. Are there any questions so far? Is there any point anybody like to make? Can we have comment down, you know? None? Okay, let me go on. I, okay, raise hand. Okay, somebody raise hand. Yes, go ahead, please. Good night, Bishop. Yes, sir. God bless you. I'm always faith from Harvest Ministry, sir. Oh, <laughs> welcome, 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 welcome. I, I did not, when I came earlier, you people wasn't hand as yet, and then I came on late. Oh. Now, the last, I have a question for you for the last study we have. No, Did you get that answer? No, 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 no. No, if it's from the last one, we don't need it. No, you have to do it for another time. What we said I before, just want to find out if you did get the answer for the question you pose. Okay, you mean, to, you mean tonight, you want to answer tonight? You mean... The, the last time before? you didn't get the answer, you said tonight. You will bring it up again. I am asking if you did get that answer. Oh, yes, yes, it is there. When you get the tape, you play the tape and you get it on it. All right? Okay, thanks. Right. It was answered. Right, it was answered. Okay, right. thank you. Good, good. God bless you. All right, good. Let's go now to Ephesians 1, 3 to 14. Ephesians 1, 3 to 14. Ephesians 1, 3 to 4. To 14. To 14. To 14. 1, 4. Ephesians okay. chapter 1, verse yeah. 1 to verse 14. Okay. Verse Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. No, that we... no, I want to stop there. Did the Bible say we're chosen in him before yeah. the, foundation? the foundation of the world? Virgin. And that's why I said next month um, lesson is going to be very important, right? Because let me tell you something. And the last time we're here, we talk about the plan of salvation. Good. Now, if you were chosen in him, before the foundation of the world, there is nothing anybody can do up here now to frustrate that. It's something that we need to know. Right? So that's why I say we need to understand God's mind 
I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you something. As soon as you read, but coming up, but I'm going to give you something. Let us look at, and this is, I like to use this because I, I like to use the extension of it. I'll show you something. God had in, in his mind, in God's mind, a man called David. Now, in, if you go in heaven, in God's mind, you're going to see that David is the father of Christ, and he's also the son. <laughs> because Christ is the root and the offspring of David. Good? He must come through the lineage of David, Judah. So if you kill David, let me tell you what you're doing. You're killing Christ down there. Guy must come through the line of David. But also, think about Solomon. A temple is to be made, and Solomon must build that temple. So if you kill David, you'll be killing Solomon also. The temple would not be made. The man with all the wisdom and all that, you would know about him. Hmm? But also, a lot of psalm that we have here today, we wouldn't have it. Yeah? Because David would not be here today. So, <laughs> what I'm trying to show you is that everything is mapped out. So what the church need to do to get into the secret of God is to look at God's blueprint. And that's what people are not doing. What people are doing these days is lean onto their own understanding and they're not going back to the blueprint. Now, after the death of Joshua, I call back, you know, but I'll carry on a little. After the death of Joshua, when war is to be fought, the children of Israel want to know who should go up to fight for us. Now, if it was me, I would say Levi <laughs> right away, right away, <laughs> right away, because, you know, and, and I would call some more who I know. But the Lord said, no. Right? Not them. Yeah. Send up Judah. Send up praise. Send up praise. The, the, the thing changed now. Right? So we don't want them type of war there again. Right? We want praise now at different times. And this is where some people don't understand when things cross over. Good? It's just like for some people who on to Moses still and John the Baptist come. And they, they, they don't move over to John the Baptist. And some people go to John the Baptist and still don't move over to Christ. Some people are Baptist even until today. Some people are in law even until today. Yeah? They don't they can't move over. <laughs> you know, there's a difference between the shepherd and the fisherman. Yeah. The, the fisherman can do what the shepherd is doing. But the shepherd cannot do what the fisherman is doing. Right? So, so it was good that David was a shepherd, Moses was a shepherd, but when you come down here, where you was Peter, <laughs> because the fisherman is more, is more flexible, he can work on land, and he can work on sea, right? So you must be able to preach, you must be able to teach, you must be able to sing, you must be able to play music, you must be able to do all this, and get joked up, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, must, you, must, you, must, you must be, you must be, you can't just be there and, and just no, 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 and so on. You have to be a fisherman, no move. They have, you have to be able to move with the time. And if the children of Issachar were children who would know the time and they could move with them, some people still in quarter and pint. <laughs> some people still in telegram, telling him something. And even, even um, some people using manual typewriter even until now, you know, so whatever. Anyway, sorry about that. That's commercial. Let's move on. <laughs> Read. Okay. 
that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Right. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, right. according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the, in the beloved, right. in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one and all things in Christ, yes. both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, yes. in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. He worketh, he work it, sorry, he worketh after the counsel of his, of his own, own will. will. Yeah. I said the will of God must be done in earth as it is in heaven. None of us can be his counselor. Brethren, when you are in the church of the living God, whatever you are going to do, ask God if this is a way. Don't use temper. Yeah? If you do, you end up like Moses, yeah? So you drink all your rivers. You don't do that. All right. You calm down yourself. And when you don't understand, ask the Lord. And sometimes we all remember you know, our thoughts are not his thoughts, you know. Mm -hmm. Our ways are not his ways. So he had it on a blueprint. And I'm trying to hammer this from about two sessions ago to show you that is not just zeal. It is not zeal to this thing, brethren. It's not education to this thing, brethren. It's not who can chop madness to this thing, brethren. It's humility. Do it and stay at the feet of the Lord and try to get the mind of God. Because, you see, if we understand God's will, then we're going to work with his will. And when he looked down on her, he's going to see the same thing that he has in heaven is being done in the earth. If we don't do that, then we're going to work contrary to him. And it don't make sense. All right? We end up fighting, quarreling, and all these things. That's not a part of the church. James Armstrong went for war and fighting among them. That's not the church. The church is supposed to seek for the deep mystery of God. That's what we are supposed to do, live godliness, righteous, godly, and sober in this present world. And, and you know, that's all. Anyway, finish reading my day. Sorry. Verse 12. Yeah. That we should be the praise of his glory, who mm -hmm. first trusted in Christ, in, in whom he also trusted. After that, he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that he believed, he were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14. Yes. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Thank you. We say, even when you receive the Holy Ghost, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you see, if you check the blueprint in heaven, you will see when the fullness of time comes, you are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. All right? When you were baptized, as a matter of fact, when you repented of your sin, if you look in heaven, you will see angels up there rejoicing over one soul that repent. Good? So it's not just a hurt thing that I'm trying to get to Virgin. It's not just a hurt something. It's heaven in, in accord with earth. Just like when the day of Pentecost, a sound came from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So the same sound that was being sound in heaven 
is the same sound that sounded in earth, and the same language that was being spoken in heaven is the same language that was being spoken on earth. So heaven and earth now was on one accord. Anytime the church reach the place that we are on one accord, in one place, then we are going to see something like what I'm going to show you now when I'm finished up tonight, after I read this one. I'm going to finish up this. Let's look at the book of Acts chapter 3, verse 16 to, verse 6 to 16. Acts chapter 3, verse 6 to 16. Acts chapter 3, verse 6 to 16. Okay, you see, the point is that the church, it, it, God is not in confusion. God is not the author of confusion. God is with one accord. So the, when the church is on one accord, then the presence of God will be there. When the church is not on one accord, we are just meeting the ear. So if the two or the three gather anywhere, all we need to do is to be on one accord. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. So here Peter went up to get beautiful, and there was this gentleman sitting down there. Everybody passing him, gone inside. And Peter and John came up. Peter and John at this time were on one accord. It don't make sense. We, we are not one on one accord, but we want to go and pray for somebody to get up on a wheelchair or pray for the sight of somebody. No, no, no. Right? We have to first iron out ourselves. We have to be on one accord. So Peter and John go up now talking to the man, and the man asked him for some money. And Peter said, silver and gold. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll read it again. Yeah. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones with his strength. And all the people and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them in the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Yeah. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he who sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. Mm -hmm. And they were filled with wonder and amazement that which had happened unto him. And as the layman which was healed as Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch, and that is called Solomon's, gravely wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power, Yes. Our holiness right. Has made it I want to stop here for me a while. Now, this is one of the problems that we are having today. Here is it that Peter and John was going up to get beautiful, and this man, silver and gold have I none, such as I have given right there with Jesus, rise up and walk. Fine. The healing process took place. It is now for Peter and John to say, Hey, I lick my chest, man. It was passed up there a while ago, you know. And heal a man. Yes, man. And they do start to collect. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you. Yeah, man. Start to collect, man, because see, see man there. Mm, he passed up there, man, and heal him, man. And, you know, and become some big thing on TV and all that. But Peter said to the people, read what Peter said. The God of Abraham. Uh -huh. And of Isaac mm -hmm. and of Jacob and the God of um, our fathers had glorified his son Jesus, whom he delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. 
Dress working to sixteen. Yeah. But he but but he denied the Holy Ghost to start, but he denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and kill the Prince of Life, whom God had raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses, verse 16, mm -hmm. and his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong. Thank you. Thank you. That's enough. His name is the Lord did the healing. We were just instruments doing it. As a matter of fact, if you go into heaven, you will see that there will be a time that Peter and John going up there. And as the fullness of time come, it will happen, but it's not Peter and John doing it. It is the Lord doing it. We are instruments being played by God. Now, God will reveal to us his deep secret, not us and our own mind. God will use us to do things when all of that is done, which will give the praises to God. All praise belong to him. None belong to us. Okay? Some people, then just preach one message, one pop, and people say, oh, Lord, they, they, they're gone, they're gone. No, 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 no. That's the time you must become humble at the feet of the Lord. All right? So God will reveal the deep and secret things but he will do nothing. He will reveal his secret to his servants, the prophet. Next month, when we come, we'll, this tonight we look at God, but next we look at the individual and how we should operate. All right. I have one more question to give you, and I want you to um, put this with the first one. The first one. Um, was in Eden, Eden, right? Eden. Why did God um, ask Adam to dress the garden after he set it up for him already? That's one. Number two, you need to work on this also. You are the usher in a church. And the Lord walked into the church. Where do you think he would want to sit? It's in the Bible. So research it. Where do you think the Lord would want to sit if you are the usher and you are moving him to a seat? If I was the usher and he come to the church, I would give the, the pastor seat. <laughs> I would give him that seat. But that's what I am saying, all right? <laughs> Don't give me no mind. You would work it out. That's not the answer, all right? So um, if you were the usher, you would know where the Lord would want to sit in the church. All right? Are there any question, any comment, any disagreements before I go? I'm here to take them now. If not, we'll draw the curtain for tonight. Going once, going twice. Okay. God bless you then, everyone. God bless you. Thank you all for coming out tonight. And um, 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 yes, and thank you all for coming out tonight. And um, God bless you. We will meet on um, next month, second Tuesday night at 7.30. Right? Remember the questions then? That oh. Right, so you need to tell about the Eden one, and you tell the world for the Lord to see. All right? God bless you. Let's bow our heads at this time. Eternal God and our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you for your love and for your mercies. We thank you for your keeping here and your tender arms around us. We thank you for your words tonight, Lord Jesus. Bless us, we pray, Lord, as we go and keep us under your blood. For we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you. Give you peace. Let all the people say, Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you. Amen.